My name is Sergeant Joe Fink. I work from the 24-hour shift out of Homicide. And this is my workshop, the part of town that everybody knows about but that nobody wants to see. Where the tragedies are deeper, the ecstasy's wilder, and the crime rate consistently higher than anywhere else. Skid Row, my beat. terrifying period in the history of my beat began in a little run-down floor shop called Mushniks. Ah, good morning, Mrs. Shiva. How's things today? Oh, the same as usual, Mr. Mushnik. My sister's nephew, Stanley, died in Little Rock, Arkansas. Oh, what happened? He got blown up. Who knows how? That's nice. Well, you would like, maybe, as usual, some flowers for the funeral. Should all acquaintance be forgot? And never brought too much. I thought possibly, uh, because I always give to you all my funeral business, uh, maybe you should possibly give to me uh, a little portrait. Look on me, Mrs. Shiva. What am I, a philatelist? I sell on Skid Row nothing but cheap carnations. And I should give you a portrait. I can't even afford water for the flowers. Uh, to my throat, I would be giving a cut. I dreamt I dwelt in marble halls. With Get up from the back! Excuse me, Mrs. Shiver, that, that Seymour is... Uh, he's a nice boy. Why don't you let him see? What? See? Look, here I got a new customer, brand new in the yellow vest. I should let the cleanup boy, what I can't even afford, chase him out right away. <laughs> Flower as fresh as the springtime mushniks, hello. Oh, hello, Dr. Farb. What can I do for you? Listen, Mushnik, I haven't got much time. Send me over two gladiolas and the fern. Excellent. That's two dozen glads, one potted fern. No, 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 Mushnik. Two gladiolas and one fern. You want I should put two gladiolas in the pot with the ferns? No, one fern, one piece altogether, three pieces. I need it for my waiting room. Yeah, it's What? A filling for now. Good, I'll drill a bigger hole. You mean you want two crummy gladiolas among crummy fine? What kind of a decoration is that? Listen, it's my flower budget for the week, Mushnik. Who can be a dentist on Skid Row? All right, excellent. I'll send Seymour right away. Who am I to argue with science? Mm, make it snappy. Now you are going to get it. Oh, you are going to get it. Look. Seymour ah! Krellboin? We were talking from the funeral flowers, but the little of funeral. Did you call me, Mr. Mushnick? No. I was calling John D. Rockefeller for to make a loan on my Rolls Royce. Sorry I said it. Now look, Seymour. You take two gladiolas. You'll cut them nice and even. You'll take one coin. You'll wrap them in a package, and you'll take them to Dr. Farr. Right? Well, go already! Now, what can I do for you, sir? Uh, my name is Burson Fouch. Excellent. I am Gravis Mushnik. Oh, that's a good one. Now, who's going to get my roses? I'll take care of you, Mrs. Shiver. Come right over here. You would like maybe some orchids for a nice girl? No, I think I'd like a couple of dozen carnations. Oh, carnations. A person can't turn around these days that somebody shouldn't drop this. You've had more than your share of bad luck, Mrs. Shiver. Bad luck, she calls it. You should have so many people kick off. You'd have somebody fall on top of you. What about the carnations? 
You should see what that Seymour is. Oh, here are your carnations. Wait, I'll wrap them for no, you. No, that's all right. I'll leave them here. Why not? Of course. What else? They are all right. Well, I've had better. Well, this is a small shop. Oh, that's okay. You know, those big places, they're full of pretty flowers, expensive flowers. When you're raising for looks and smell, you're bound to lose some food value. I like to eat these little out-of-the-way places. Oh! Such a thing, eating flowers. Look, don't knock it until you try it, huh? Look what happened. This is what I was trying to tell you before. Look on him, everybody. Look at the quality of his work. I ask you, when I fired him, where is he going to get such another good job? You mean I'm fired? No, I'm electing you president from the United States. Yes, you are fired. Gravis, you can't do that. Who, who can't? I didn't mean it. You didn't mean it. You never mean it. You didn't mean it the time you put up the bouquet with the get well card in the funeral parlor and sent the black lilies to the old lady in the hospital. You didn't mean it. But this time, I, Gravis Musnik, mean it. He means it. But gee, Mr. Mushnick, don't I always try to do what's right? And I'm crazy about flowers. I like flowers almost as much as Audrey does. Excellent. You're fired. Why don't you give him a chance to resurrect himself? I give him a chance to quit. I ain't gonna quit. You're a brave boy. You're fired. But that ain't fair, Mr. Mushnick. You know what I'm doing? I'm working on a special surprise plant just for you. I'm growing a plant like you ain't never seen before. Excellent. I can't even sell the plants I got in my shop out, you. Now, wait a minute. He's got a new kind of plant you want to look at. I don't look on flowers, Mr. Yellow Vest. I got ancestors in the flower business for 200 years, but I got one shop on Skid Row, one stinking shop. I don't even like flowers. No, you don't understand what I mean. Look, I've eaten in flower shops all over the world, and I've noticed that the places that have the most weird and unusual plants do the best business. See? 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 What is this, a tango? All right. Explain me more. Well... I remember one place that had a whole wall covered with poison ivy. And people came from miles around to look at that wall, and they stayed to buy. The owner got rich. No. He scratched himself to death in an insane asylum. Oh, that was my cousin Harry. All right. All right. You go home, and you get this fancy schmancy plant, and you bring it back here. And if Mr. Yellow Vest Fouch says it's a draw, you still got a job. If he don't, out you go to bore you, right? Don't worry. You'll like it. You'll see. K. You've been listening to Music for Old Invalids. Our next selection is entitled Sick Room Serenade. Seymour, is that you? Yeah, Ma. Come in here, look at my tongue. But Ma, I already seen your tongue. Have you no sympathy for your poor mother? Laughing at her and mocking her realness and she's got one foot in the grave? Oh, I didn't mean it. Oh, you never mean it. Oh, come on, look at my tongue. Tongue's a tongue, Ma. They all look the same to me. Oh. Did you stop at Dr. Mallard's and get the results of my tests? Yeah, he said there's nothing wrong with you. Oh, not Dr. Mallard. He, he's one doctor I thought would tell the truth. He said you should be playing fullback for the Rams. He wants me dead. I'll bet he's assistant coroner. Ma, I got a guy. And I know I've got my goiters coming back. I can feel it every morning after breakfast. Yeah, that's when you take those great... Oh! What you got, a little surprise for me? Open it up and see. All right. <gasps> oh! <laughs> Dr. Slurp Saddle's famous tonic. Wait here. To be taken internally or externally for pain and neuritis, neuralgia, headache. If hit by a truck, call your physician. Alcoholic contact, 98%. <laughs> oh, Seymour, you never know what this is going to do for me. A 
Oh, I can feel that surge of warm health going through me already. <clears throat> Look, Ma, I gotta get my plant and hurry back to the shop. You mean that lousy weed out in the kitchen? Yeah, and if Mr. Mushnick doesn't like it, he's gonna fire me. Apparently, my hearing is going out on me. I get the distinct impression that your job security depends on what Mushnick thinks of that thing. Gee, it looks worse than it did this morning when I went to work. I wish I knew what to do with it. Well, if you asked me, I'd pitch it out in the trash. I don't like my house cluttered up with rotten vegetables. Look, Ma, I gotta hurry. Can I bring you anything? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Bring me the evening news. They're running a, a self-diagnosis contest. The winner gets to go to Mayo Clinic. <laughs> Bye, Ma. Bye, son. I'll see you the rosy edge of dawn. Drink to me, old with our eyes, and I will... I put this on my bill. Well, here it is, everybody. What do you think of it? Well, it sure is different. It looks delicious, but don't you think it's kind of stale? Well, it hasn't been feeling too well. You called that a fancy plant. It looks like it never spent an LT day in its entire life. I don't care. I like it anyway. You, you like even skunk cabbage. Yeah. What kind of a plant is this, Seymour? Well, I'm not sure. I got the seeds from a Japanese gardener over on Central Avenue. He found them in with an order he got from a plantation next to a cranberry farm. Fine, fine. You don't even know what is this plant you're growing. Well, well I gave it a name. What name? Oh, gee. What? You gave it a dirty name? You can't even mention it? Well, I named it Audrey Jr. <gasps> you named it after me! Oh, really? Well, that's the most exciting thing anyone's ever done to me. You poor kid. I don't think it's so much I should keep on spending $10 a week on your salary. But, Gravis, he named it after me. I know, and if they keep it, they'll name it Mushnick's Folly because I'll be in jail for non-payment of taxes. Are you crazy? Who, who? You, you. That's probably the only plant of its kind in the world. Don't you realize if Seymour can nurse that thing back to health, you'll have people coming here from all over? You think so, you found it? I know so, you Mushnick. Now, that's all I'm saying on the subject. Besides, I've got to get home. My wife's making gardenias for dinner. Good night, you pal. Good night. And I'll see you tomorrow. Crazy about kosher flowers. He's a nice man. Maybe he knows what he's talking about. Maybe he's not so stupid. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll keep you and this dumbbell junior for a week. If you can noise it back to Elt, you both can stay. If you can't, you're both fired. Oh, gee, thank you, Mr. Mushnick. Don't feel sad, Seymour. Don't waste your pity on me, Audrey. I'm not worth it. Who says you're not? Everybody. Yeah, I know. But I think you're a fine figurative of a man, and, and I know that Audrey Jr. will be the sweetest thing in the whole wide world. Well, I don't know. I've given it every kind of fancy fertilizer and atomic plant food and distilled mineral water you can buy, but it just gets sicker and sicker. Don't worry. You're going to be another Luther Glendale. Pasadena. Burbank. Good night, Seymour. Good night, Audrey. What's the matter, little plant? Haven't I done everything I could for you? Where did I goof? You're the first little plant I ever tried to grow, and if you die, I don't know what I'll do. Please don't die. I'll get you some water, okay? Opened up just like you do every night at sunset. I wish I knew how to make you grow. Here, let me move this out of your way so you can breathe. Ow! 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 ow. Hey, what happened? How come you woke up? Blood? You like blood? Oh, you must be kidding. Well, we'll see. I 
what I'm doing for you. Ow! Oh, who would have thought it? Well, I guess there's just no accounting for people's tastes. him, Audrey. Isn't he beautiful? Isn't he delicious? Isn't he got the two dollar raise? What happened to your fingers? These things. Uh, so how come I'm all of a sudden so wonderful? Five bees, one for each finger? Ten bees. Did you say I was getting a two dollar raise? Correct, my very excellent Seymour. Ten bees. What did I do now? Don't you know what you did? Just look. Oh, boy, look at that. It grew. It's almost a foot long. Isn't it empirical? It grows like a cold sore from the lip. Oh, hello, young pretty ladies. What can Gravis Mushnik do for you? Well, we saw your sign outside. About the Audrey Jr. So we thought we'd come in and take a look. Well, give a look. That makes four people a day who've come in just to look at it. Oh, did you? Is that just too much? Oh, what kind of plant is it? It's an Audrey Jr. Where was it you got in trouble with 10 bees? Well, is that all? I mean, doesn't it have a scientific name? Yes, of course, but who could denounce it? You oh, would like maybe wow. to buy something. Well, we don't have any money. Except $2,000. But that's just to spend on flowers. So we don't have any of our own. Isn't that a drag? You got just two thousand dollars just for to spend on flowers? Mm -hmm. That's right. Who died? The Chamber of Commerce? Well, we're from Cucamonga High School. And we're building a float for the Rose Bowl Parade. Which is made out of flowers. Thousands of them. And we're on the committee that picks the florist. And then glues on the flowers. <gasps> Gee, that sure is a mad plant. Wow, yeah. Seymour here invented it. He did! Oh, thousands of oh, no, girls, no, girls, no. girls, 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 please don't oh. damage the horticulturists. Tell me, how come you don't buy all these thousands of flowers from Gravis Mushnik? My flowers got something the others don't. What's that? The cheek. Well, gee, if your shop is good enough to develop the Audrey Jr., I guess it can get us everything we need. Yeah, we'll talk it over with the rest of the committee. Excellent. Well, we gotta run now. Bye, all. Bye, Seymour. Bye. Bye, girls. A son. A son. Look, Audrey. I got a son. Oh, gee, Mr. Mushnick. What, Mr. Mushnick? I don't want you should call me Mr. Mushnick anymore. I want you should call me Dad. Okay, Dad. Isn't that beautiful? Seymour Krellboyne, come over here, my son. I want to talk on you about the future. Look on this fly trap. Look on it. Soon we got no more skid row. We will be rich, us. I am building for you a giant greenhouse in which you are making impossible flowers, which in turn I am selling at ridiculous prices in my giant new flower saloon in Beverly Hills. Do you see that big sign in the sky? It is saying, Gravis Mushnik in French. Isn't it exciting? And we'll have an orchestra right by the cash register. And Gravis will wave his arms, and the orchestra will play Mendelssohn's spring song. And I'll come out in a gown wrapped by somebody expensive and say... The carnations are $600 a dozen, two dozen for a thousand. It's a bargain. Get them while they last. Stop shouting. My uncle Mush and brother Yanko just passed away in Tenafly, New Jersey. Tell me. How much are the carnations today? The carnations are six hundred dollars a dozen. And why are they letting him run around loose? <laughs> please, please excuse my son, Mrs. Shiva. Just point anything in the store, and it is yours. <laughs> That's right. In the cash register, maybe, huh? Ah, wait a minute. Here, here are several dozen carnations on the house, courtesy of Gravis Mushnik, the Bloom Tycoon. That's my dad. Thanks. Thanks very much. Only tell me, why are you so happy? Not only did my uncle Moshe's brother and uncle die, Tennessee, New Jersey. You should also give some flowers to that poor dead plant there. Good morning, Mr. Mushnik. Good morning. Good morning, Mrs. Shiva. Look what happened to my plant, Dad. Who are you calling Dad? Who, who? Oh, no. And it was so 
beautiful just a few seconds ago. Excellent. Just a few seconds ago, I gave away dozens of carnations free to Mrs. Shiver. I didn't mean it. You have perhaps an explanation. No, but if you give me a minute, I'll think of one. I can see it all now. We are in the poor house. That big sign in the sky, it is reading, Seymour Krellboyn, rest in peace, in Arabic. Oh, you've got to give him another chance. You promised me a week, Mr. Mushnick. I'll sit up all night with that plant. It'll be healthy in the morning. You'll see. I promise. I promise. Talk. I got a talking plant. Say it again. Feed me. Oh, boy. I never been to college and I ain't been around much. But I'd have been willing to bet there ain't no such thing as a talking plant. But I'll take your word for it. Gee, Junior, I'd, I'd like to feed you. But I used up all my fingers. Eee! Oh. Look at me. I'm all cut to pieces. But... Maybe I can find another drop here someplace. That's the best I can do. More, more! But I'm already anemic. Feed me more! Gee, Junior, I'd be happy to give you anything I got, but I gotta keep a little blood for myself or I'll be in worse shape than Mom. Mm. I'm sorry, Junior. Oh, I'll go for a walk. Maybe I'll think of something.
chow hound. Don't bother me. I got problems of my own. Feed me. I'm sorry, pal. I'm fresh out of blood. Talk to somebody else. <laughs> I'm hungry. I don't care what you are. Can't you see I'm knocked out? I just killed a man. I'm a murderer. You think it's fun to be a murderer? You think it's fun to haul around a sack full of food? Oh, no, Junior. What kind of guy do you think I am? <laughs> I'm starved. Well, maybe just a snack. <laughs> That looks great. <laughs> now, that is what I call a salad. What do you call that salad? Cesarean. Well, before the next course, I think I'll have a nice cigar. All right? You would like maybe a cigar? <laughs> <laughs> you don't smoke cigars. I... What am I thinking about? Where are the matches? Oh, oh, you know what I found? What? I'm looking for the matches, and I found I left the money in the other suit. Here's your mock chicken leg. You don't have any money? So what else is new? All right, all right. I made a mistake. After all, a man is entitled. Go on, this is your story. I'll wait for the punch. Don't get smart with me, girlie. I'll have you know that in my shop in the cash register, I'm having the total day's receipts, which is summing up to more than nine dollars. You'll bring the rest of the food, then I'll go to the shop and get the money. You're playing my favorite song. Now look here, Buster. One of you is gonna go down right now and get the loot while the other one stays here until the first one gets back, if you get what I mean. Oh, fine. In this fancy schmancy restaurant, you are holding hostages, right? All right. Excellent. You eat up, Audrey. I'll be back in a flash with the cash. Bye, Gravis. Wine, gin, bourbon. What? Scotch, rye, tequila, sake, manischewitz. Did you bring the money? Don't bug me with the money. I got to get drunk now. What flipped him? I don't know. Look here. Here, take it. Bring me anything. Bring me everything. Creme de mint. Everything you got. Okay. Gravis, what happened? Don't ask. You look like you've seen a ghost. Ghosts I could handle. Don't ask. Why don't you tell me? Maybe I could help you. Help you couldn't. Try and eat something. It'll calm your aggravation. In my own shop. Audrey, you wouldn't believe it. I wish you'd break out and tell me. All right, I'll tell you tomorrow, right after I am telling the police. But Mushnick didn't come to the police. If he had, that might have been the finish of the unhappy story. It was not. You 
wouldn't be interested in selling a half interest in this place, huh? <laughs> Mr. Mushnet, we talked to the committee, and they said we could use your flower on the flute. And guess what? We're going to feature Audrey Jr. Right on top. Boy, Can't you just picture it? I can picture it. Oh, won't the people just eat it up? Eat up the people. And we're going to have the big part of it open, so she can sit in it. Oh. The queen with her crown and scepter. She'll be so cute. Oh, you can just eat her up. Eat up the girl. Oh, there's Seymour! talk about that plant is that a nice subject for to talk the plant the plant is great it's it's four times bigger than it was yesterday i saw i saw how come the plant is now so big oh, i don't know but look at all them people out there we only been open a half hour we already done 70 dollars worth of business 85 now look seymour you gave this plant a fancy name audrey jr but i want to know right now what do just people call it well it's a cross between a Butterworth and a Venus flytrap. Venus flytrap? And what are the habits of this Venus flytrap? Well, the book says it eats insects. It eats them three times in its life, and then it's full grown. Excellent. And how many times is this one eat? Well, once or twice. You don't remember? Well, this is kind of an unusual type flytrap. That is a possibility. It may never eat again. I don't see how it could get any bigger. Then you think it don't need any more flies? Yeah. Oh, my tooth is just killing me. All right, excellent. You run along to the dentist. I'll take care of things here. Thanks, boy. <gasps> Gravis, we've got to order more flowers. Tons of them. I'm making lots of money. Seymour, I won't even use Novocaine. Oh, you broke the mirror in my mouth. Well, don't tell me about it, stupid. Just swallow it. Uh, all right, yes. Let's see now, Seymour. See, I'll have this one and this one and that one, and I have to have this one, it's Seymour. There's only one, too. Seymour, who is the dentist here, you or me? Are you practicing dentistry without a license? No. All right. Uh -huh. Let's see. Uh, oh, shh. Seymour, Seymour, don't be that. Look at that. Will you look at that, Seymour? I didn't know you were an elk. Look. You know, I can't afford an assistant. So I get this ready, instant mix. It doesn't last very long, but it tastes good. Mm. All right, Seymour. Oh, stay away from me. Sing. Uh -huh. You're trying to kill me. A duel. Aha. Pooch. <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> I see it is. <laughs> uh, you, you can come in now. <laughs> My name is Wilbur Force. Wilbur Force what? Just... Wilbur Force. My first name is Wilbur. My last name is Force. <laughs> I don't have a middle name. Well, you have an appointment, maybe? No, but you were very highly recommended to me by one of your patients, a Mrs. Eshiva. I do a lot of undertaking for her relatives. <laughs> well, as you can see, I have a customer now, and I'm all booked up for the rest of the day, so you'll have to come back tomorrow. Oh, I couldn't do that. I have three or four abscesses, a touch of pyorrhea, nine or ten cavities, I lost my pivot tooth, and I'm in terrible pain. <laughs> well, I, I can't help you today. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll just wait outside. <laughs> The patient came to me with a large hole in his abdomen <laughs> caused by a fire poker used on him by his wife. <laughs> he almost bled to death and gangrene had set in. I didn't give him much of a chance. There were other complications. <laughs> the man had cancer, tuberculosis, leprosy, and a touch of the grip. <laughs> I decided to operate. My, my patient just left. You, you could come in now. Oh, goody. <laughs> I didn't see the other man leave. Well, he went out the back door. You know, most people don't like to go to the dentist, but I rather enjoy it myself, don't you? <laughs> I mean, there's such... There's a real feeling of growth, of... of <laughs> progress when that, that old drill goes in. I mean... I'd almost rather go to the dentist than anywhere, wouldn't you? Yeah. Now, no Novocaine. It dulls the senses. <laughs> this is gonna hurt you more than it is me. Oh, goody, goody, here it comes. <laughs> oh, my God, don't stop now! Well, I made a lot of holes, and now I gotta fill it up with this here silver stuff. Well, aren't you gonna pull any? Well, uh... Oh, go on. Well, it's your mouth. Quite an afternoon. I can truly say I've never enjoyed myself so much. I'll recommend you to all my friends. Thank you. Bye. Bye now. Feed me. Oh, take it easy, Dracula. What do you think I'm carrying here? My dirty laundry? Well, goodbye, Dr. Farr. You may have been a crummy dentist, but you were a nice fella. I never meant to kill anybody in my whole life. I've killed two in the last two days. Well, but you asked for it coming after me with that knife and all. Fun voyage, Dr. Farr. You want anything else? <coughs> See you in the morning. Kids? Lost one yesterday. Lost one, eh? How'd that happen? Playing with matches. Well, those are bricks. Yeah, I guess so. 
Got a strange one here. Railroad people say they lost one of their best detectives the other night. Oh, yeah? Down by the yards. He's watching the refrigerator cars. Refrigerator cars? Ice thieves. Oh, yeah? What happened? Don't know. Vanished. Blood on tracks. Clues? None. Anything else? Dennis. Bob. Dead? Missing. Clues? Blood in office. Where? Skid Row. Ideas? None. Check it out? Yeah. Now we are on the case. Officer Frank Stooley and me. My name is Fink. Sergeant Joe Fink. I'm a Fink. You don't like to kiss me. Why shouldn't I? Nobody else ever did. Well, I do like to. You do? You really do? You like to kiss me? Sure I do. Would you like to kiss me again? Okay. That plant? Oh, boy, you kiss good, Audrey. Well, I guess I just have a good kisser. How, how, how did it? Did, did, did. Would you like to go out on a date with me some night? When? Oh, sure I would, Seymour. Anytime. Tonight? Okay. Oh, boy. Uh, about that plant. We got the list of flowers for the float, for the rose parade. I can't talk to you now, girls. Talk on Audrey. Oh, we got the list for the float. Okay, let's take a look at it. Okay. Hi, right, what's cooking? Look at my plant. My, what a large one. Yeah. Hello, Mr. Shiva. What's new? Oh, I got terrible news. My nephew Frankie just lost his little boy. Oh, that's too bad. How did it happen? He was playing with matches. Would you like to buy maybe some flowers? Yeah, about 50 cents worth. Well, I'll get them for you. Look at my plant. Oh, I'm looking. Your name Gravis Mushnick? Look, I'm a Mushnick Gravis. That's my name. Just want to ask you a few questions. Questions ask me. Just about. want to ask you a few questions. I, I didn't do it. Do what? Whatever. Ever see this man? Man, see picture. Or Why are you so nervous? You got a guilty conscience? No. Why should I? Ever see this man? Man, uh, see the, the, the picture, Doctor Farb. So you know him? My dentist. Uh, he, he, he maybe did something. Disappeared. Blood in his office. The other man too. Blood in the railroad tracks. And few spare parts. Oh, okay. that, 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 Doctor Farb is murdered. Is he? No, who knows? Not me. What do you think? He doesn't know anything. Okay, Mushnik. If you hear anything about these men, call our office. Sure, I'll be glad to cooperate with the police. Hello, I'm sitting. Oh, isn't it terrible what happened to your boy, Frankie? Those are the brakes. All right, Seymour. Now you tell me if that plant is finished all grown up. He's finished all growing up. You wouldn't kid your father. My father came home. Me, idiot! It's a finger of speech. Now look, I can't stand any more that plant. It's growing me out of house and home. Well, it ain't gonna grow anymore, I promise. How can you be so sure? It ate three times already. Who, I mean, what did it eat this time? Well, about, about a million Japanese beetles. So don't eat no more. It's full. Grab us. There's a lady from some kind of a commitment outside. I think it's important. Excellent. By the by, I understand you want to take Audrey out on a date tonight. That's very good with me, because I am staying to keep an eye on that Meshugana plant. Where are we going to go tonight, Seymour? Oh, I just remembered I don't have any money. Well, that's okay. We could take a walk along the ocean or something. I got a great idea. We can eat dinner at my house. My mom's a great cook. Well, that's swell. 
Oh, boy, I'll call her later and tell her. Okay. Oh, that's remarkable. You like? Oh, I neither like nor dislike anything, my goodness. I happen to represent the Society of Silent Flower Observers of Southern California. How about that? Tell me, who created this magnificent bloom? I did, me. Oh, and what might your name be? Seymour Krellboyn with a K. Krellboyn. Krellboyn. Raised it in the coffee can. This? Well, tell me, Mr. Krellboyn, uh, is this a freak, or, or can more be raised from the seed? We should live so long. Well, I don't think there are going to be any more, Miss... Uh... Uh, Fischtwanger. Mrs. Hortense Fischtwanger. Uh, I think this is going to be the only one, Mrs. Fischtwanger. Fischtwanger. Fischtwanger? Uh, it's probably indigestible, anyway. <laughs> At any rate, I have the honor to tell you, Seymour Curlboyne, that you have been selected to receive the annual trophy of the Society of Silent Flower Observers of Southern California. A trophy? Me? Such is justice. Uh, tell me, when do you suppose those large buds will open? Well, according to what the book says about the plants that I crossed, they should open day after tomorrow at sunset. Ah, very well. Then I shall return at that time to present the trophy. Good day. Remarkable. Oh, boy, I'm going to get a trophy. Oh, Seymour, I'm so proud of you. Oh, a real trophy. For Audrey Jr. We can put it on the floor in the rope parade. Oh, boy. Oh, don't look at me. I I'm a terrible sight. I I'm a complete sea hag. She always says that. Oh, well, it's true. I haven't been feeling very well lately. Audrey, this is my Ma, Winifred Krellboing. Ma, this is Audrey Fulquart. She's my girl. Hi, Audrey. Are you hungry? I sure am. I could eat a hurt. Oh, <laughs> well, sit right down, and I'll go get the first course. Sit here, Audrey. You want me to take your sweater? Oh. Yeah. Never mind that. <laughs> well, well, now try this. <coughs> it tastes like cough syrup. Dr. Flynn's cough syrup. A toast? To Audrey Jr. No, to Audrey Sr. I don't let nobody get near you. I'm hungry. 
and other fine kettle and fish. Who would you like to have tonight? You look fat enough. We not only got a talking plan, we got one that makes with smart cracks. Will you listen to me, you botanical bum? Food you wouldn't get. Not from Gravis Mushnik. I'm starved. Excellent. You would unpopulate the old Skid Row. Well, you can forget about it. You wouldn't get fed from Gravis Mushnik tonight. Good night. You'll get yours. If it tastes a little bitter, it's because it's made of Chinese herbs and it's flavored with acromias and Epsom salts. There ain't another cook in the whole world like my ma. That's what your old man said before the louse ran out on me. You know, if you're gonna be married, you gotta be a good cook. Well, maybe you could teach me. You think me getting married? Well, he hasn't asked me yet. Who hasn't? Seymour. Seymour's too young to get married. Look here, a boy's gotta go out and play around a little bit. Go out on the make and have a ball. But Seymour, I don't want to have a ball. I want to be with Audrey. Oh, no, oh, look, Seymour. Seymour. You promised you wouldn't get married until you bought me an iron lung. Well, you've been breathing for years, Ma. Well, it ain't easy. It ain't easy, son. I wouldn't know even a fly. Come out in the light where I could see you. No, please don't shoot. Please, please. I'm only Gravis Mushnik. You wouldn't want to kill me. Where would you hide the body? Don't worry, I'm not going to shoot you. Not unless you try something. Try something? I never tried anything in my life. I wouldn't try anything now. You want my money? Take it. You want I should go out and steal you some more? That's all right, too. I'll do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> I like your brand of hospitality. You'll excuse it isn't more. I'm only a poor florist. Yeah, yeah. You got about 30 bucks here. Come on now. Where's the rest of it? I was in here this afternoon. I saw about 30,000 people in here. They must have spent some money. Where is it? There ain't no more money. They came in to look on the plant. It's a big attraction, Audrey Jr. The plant. Don't try to snow me, Jim. 30,000 squares didn't come in here just to look for a plant. I want it. They, 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 I don't got no more money, honest. Believe me. Okay, let's try this. One, two, three. Four. No, I ain't got no more money, honest. All right, try it the other way around. Five, four, three, two. All one. right, all right, I'm ready. Okay, big bad, where? In the plant. In the plant. The big plant, Audrey Jr. Inside the big leaf. That's right, inside. How <laughs> do you get it open? Just knock. In there. In there. Inside. In the bottom. I don't see anything. Way inside. Right in the bottom. You got us a date with Audrey tonight. I am no more sitting up with that no good Nick plant. But gee, Mr. Mushnick, you don't have to sit up with it anymore. It's all grown up now. Excellent, smart guy. How do you know it don't be hungry no more? Well, because... Tonight you are staying. 
then tomorrow they're coming and they're going to give you a trophy and then after that we are getting rid once and for all for that plan. Getting rid of it? Why? Don't ask why, why. The end, into the garbage can. Aloha. Oi. Yes, Mrs. Shiva. Oh, Seymour, you wonderful plant. Oh, that's all right, Audrey. I'll grow other plants, even more wonderful ones. I know you will. Did you figure out what we're doing tonight? Yeah, we're going to a place full of beautiful flowers. We have to stay here. Yeah. Well, never mind. We'll have a picnic. It'll be just like going to the country. Oh, Did you boy. Get the 3,000 pink azaleas for the arbor and um, the 9,000 yellow moms for the, for, for the border. Yeah, and the, the roses and we, for the front for and the back. No, around the back. What do you mean you're going to a picnic at night with that full quart girl? Don't you like Audrey, Ma? She's out after your money. I don't have any money. Oh, she's a smart one. She'll latch on to you until you get some, and then goodbye fortune. But Audrey's an honest girl, Ma. Yeah, never trust a woman who's too healthy. But Audrey had a bad cold a couple of weeks ago. Oh, a cold, a puny cold. Why don't you get yourself a real female with something decent like manana eucleosis or, or gallstones? Well, maybe she could catch something like that. The only thing she'll catch is you. And she'll take you off to some shady sanitarium and leave me to chiropractors and faith healers. I know when I'm not wanted. Oh, oh gee, Ma. Don't feel sorry for me. I'll just find a nice wet alley somewhere and curl up and wait for the end. Oh, please don't die till I get back, will you, Ma? I'll take care of you. I'll always take care of you. I promise. Yeah. Bye. Mm -hmm. Gee, Audrey, I never tasted food like this before. It's a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Peanut butter and jelly? What does that cure? Nothing. It's just a food. Well, what good is it if it doesn't clear up pimples or shrink your sinus tissues or something? You're just being silly, Seymour. Seymour, what do you want to be? Well, I want to grow things. If I had a lot of money, I'd go to the South Seas where they grow the most fabulous plants in the world. Well, that sounds exciting. Yeah. I'd like to go to the South Seas, too. There's no reason why you couldn't go. Would you take me with you, Seymour? Oh, I couldn't very well go without you, Audrey. Why not? Oh, because... because I'm in love with you, Audrey. Oh, I'm in love with you, too, Seymour. Feed me. What'd you say? I, I was just kidding. I'm hungry. Seymour. I didn't mean it. Why did you say it? Oh, food. You didn't even say that. Oh, yes, I did. I said it. I said it. Oh, I'm looking right at you. Uh, well, I'm a ventriloquist. You're what? A ventriloquist. Feed me. Seymour, do you feel all right? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, then stop all this nonsense and kiss me. I'm dying from hunger. All right, if you're so hungry, eat something. But forget about me. Gee, I'm sorry, Audrey. Give me to eat. If you can't control yourself, I'm going home. I need some chow. Oh. Uh, an empty stomach. Audrey, please wait. Listen to me. I've listened to all the nonsense I want to hear, Seymour. You're a nut. You tell me that you love me, and then you act like a complete idiot. Please listen, Audrey. I'll be able to explain everything soon. Well, why can't you explain now? Because so many things are so important. I want to marry you, but I got to take care of Mom. Well, that plant in there is going to make it all come true. Tomorrow they're going to give me a trophy and I'll be famous. I'll be a big botanist. And then we can go to the South Seas, just like we planned and but all. But that doesn't have anything to do with what went on in there. When you're ready to come to your senses, Seymour, then I'll talk to you. Good night, Seymour. I'm getting pretty tired of you. I need food. I don't care what you need. Look what you've done to me. You not only made a butcher out of me, but you drove my girl away. Shut up and bring on the food. Don't tell me to shut up. You shut up. Who raised you from a bunch of little seeds? Who fed you all them high-class fertilizers and sat up all night with you when you were sick? Nobody else would have done that for you. Do you think anybody else would have brought you human beings to eat? You're darn right they wouldn't. 
Well, I've helped you, and you've helped me. Now shut your trap and go to sleep. I'm tired. Crowbine! My name is Leonora Clyde. How's the rain on the rhubarb? Master is hungry. Well, hello there. I gotta find food for Master. Food I gotta find for Master. For Master, I gotta find food. Maybe I can help. Who are you? My name is Leonora Clyde. I love you. Master wants food. Let the old goat wait. The night is young, and so are we. Master doesn't eat goat. Well, what kind of food does he like? Ooh! <laughs> That's more like it. Kiss me. What's the matter? Don't you like me? Too bony. Too bony? Nobody ever told me that before. Beef is better than veal. Ah, uh, you're such a dodo. What do you call this? Chopped liver? <laughs> Master would like more fat. Speak for yourself, John. My name is Seymour. My name is Seymour. That's my name, too. Uh, are you interested, or are you just wasting my time? I never thought anybody would volunteer. Do you volunteer? Sure, I do. All right, if you're sure you want to volunteer. All right, my place or yours? I don't care. Well, flip a coin. I don't have a coin. Flip anything, silly. Well, there's a rock. Wet or dry? Wet. search was narrowing, and we knew that soon we would have the killer. Not that we had any more clues than before, but we had to tell the chief something. I had that feeling in my bones that the mystery was drawing to its climax, and I was determined to be on hand. All right, out, out, out. Nobody is in. Today we have a special occasion for Seymour Crowboyne, which has invented the big plan. So I want everybody should please stay out of the way. We want Seymour! We want Seymour! We want Seymour! Seymour! Oh! 
I tell you, this business is worse than being a conductor in a revoluting door. I'll be glad when this day is finished. It's a celebration. They're presenting my son with a trophy. Yeah, what'd he do, run away from home? Please don't look at me that way, Audrey. I want to talk to you. I'm sorry, Seymour. I just don't understand you. I'll explain everything after the ceremony. You, police, what are you doing here? Heard there was something going on here this evening. Just thought we'd come by and keep an eye on things. Look, we don't need no eyes kept on nothing. Everything. Wait, the society of silent flower observers has arrived and sunset is almost upon us. Welcome, lady and gentlemen. We are honored for to have you. Still working on those disappearances. We think they were murdered. Hey, look here, young man. That's no way to talk at a time like this. Let me see your tongue. Uh-huh. Now, what you got? Just the facts, ma'am. Trench mouth. I know, I had it back in 09. Better have that looked into, Frank. Whatever you say, Joe. Uh, Mr. Crabboy, uh, the sun is going down now, and uh, you do think those buds are going to open? I hope so. Because if they don't, Mr. Crabboy, we shall just have to present the award at another time. Oh, it's starting to open! It's the mark! Oh, isn't that the railroad cop? Look at the rest. What do you think, Frank? They're all there, Joe. Yes, you're right. Mr. Crowboy, how do you explain this? I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. That's right, officer. He didn't mean to kill them. Am I? Seymour, you promised you'd explain. Looks like they're getting away, Joe. Yes, you're right. Let's catch them. Right. Oh, now the float will be perfect. Yeah.
You wouldn't find him here with the toilets. Let's go back. to give up, gentlemen. You wouldn't find him tonight. Look, the door's open, Frank. Oh. He was such a good boy. Seymour! I didn't mean it. <laughs> 